Now, one question I get a lot is, how do you create a better relationship with your dog? And I think it's important for you guys to understand the full concept behind that. I'm gonna go into the facility here today and I'm gonna work with one of our boarding trains and go over just how to start those very easy steps to create a better relationship with your dog. Now, before I go into that in depth, there's one thing I want you guys to think about. All you have to do is think of a bigger picture. But before we do that, I wanna play a little something we call Tom's Trivia. It's a little special game I created for you dog lovers out there to see if you really know dogs or not. And the question of today for Tom's Trivia is simple. What breed is Lakota? What do you guys think she is? So we're gonna go grab Beacon. He's a young Swiss mountain dog. He just got here for our board and train program. And I'm gonna show you guys just to start right now, you guys can do this at home, how to build that stronger, clearer, have that clarity in your relationship. Here we go. First thing you wanna do is just put him into that sit before he rushes out of the gate. So he's gotta go on my cue, not his. We do the same thing here. Break. Good. So the reason why you do that is to just gain that structure. As he's going pee, we have a second to talk. Gain that structure. So if it's a crate, if it's a, if it's a baby pen, if it's a, whatever he's in, a kennel, he or she's in, all you're gonna do is say, hey buddy, we're gonna start the day with me in control. I know you wanna go outside. You even may have to go outside to go potty, but you just wanna start that structure to say, hey, I'm gonna let you outside. It sets the tone for your relationship and it sets the mood for the entire day. So in order to do this, the only thing you need is just a basic sit. And again, what your goal is, is to just tell the dog that they are not in control because that's what ruins relationships very quickly. Eye boogers, no eye boogers. So I'm gonna do it again here really quick. We're just gonna go inside. Make sure you give yourself enough room when you swing the door that it doesn't bop the dog in the face and reset every second. So you're gonna bring him back a little bit. Beacon, sit. Good sit. And again, threshold. He's gonna to wanna to say, I'm running in before you, it's party time. And I'm gonna say, I don't think so. He's just gonna be in his sit. I'm not gonna tell him to stay because he's under implied sits, which means he has to stay there until I say break and the sit is implied, which means we don't have to apply the stay into that command. So we're just gonna open this door again and see what he does. Get his attention, he gets up. So we're gonna open this door and try this again. Good. I'm gonna close it. As you guys do this, you can build your, brick. you can build your thresholds and continue to get off. Continue to get better and better as you go. So if your dog is struggling with that like they, my trainers have already done some some work with him and, and they did good and he's doing good so he's he's a little bit more structured than a normal dog right out of the gate so if you guys are struggling at home with constant bolting take your time this is something that really takes a lot of patience on your part and a lot of time so give yourself enough time if it's not working the first five minutes like it's working for here with me that's okay take your time with this so one other thing I should throw in there is you don't wanna just get lucky either. When we do dog training, sometimes we get lucky, the dog does what we want and they don't really know what they did. So I would say do this maybe three times. You put the dog in a sit, you open the door, good sit, reward the dog. Now you don't have to, you're noticing I probably, a lot of people say, hey, you don't use a lot of food. A dog's chemicals in his brain goes off when he sees something he likes or he hears something he likes. So all I'm gonna do is just give him a good boy for that. I don't have to apply food. Um, it's something that again, develops your relationship with me and him. Once you start bringing food out with animals, things get a little blurry for them. So I'm developing that relationship organically and naturally between him and I on basic obedience and threshold work. 
So now that we've completed this three to four times, I'm gonna give him a break and I suggest you guys start working on a release command for your dog. If you haven't done it yet, it's simple. You just say a command like break or free and you just tell the dog, okay, we're done working. And then don't engage them back into work or a sit or heal until you say otherwise. Break. So the other thing that I suggest for you guys is to do this on multiple different thresholds. These thresholds, these door frames, these crates, anything a dog walks through is like a portal. It's like a video game. As soon as they go through that portal, they're in a new world. So what you wanna do is make sure that you're transitioning to different types of portals or different types of different types of transition zones to make sure your dog is balanced and proofed across the board and not in just one location. So I'm just gonna show you really quick how to do it with a gate. A lot of times even the noise of the door handle will get your dog. If you guys are failing when you do this and the dog jumps up, you're gonna immediately just put him back into a sit. Good. Good sit. And again, condition this so it doesn't become a very anxious thing. A lot of dog owners struggle with that threshold boundaries. They just, they see a door and they're ready to go out and they dart out. And again, this video is about developing a better relationship, a calmer relationship with you and your dog. So, so when, when your dog, dog gets super stimulated and overly excited, they tend to make bad decisions and really start checking you out. So make sure when you're doing this, you, the handler or the trainer, is as calm as possible as well. Good. So I'm just gonna continue to practice this until I feel comfortable to move on to the next level, which is gonna be the exit with the door here. So the gate, We've passed. Break. So just continuing these thresholds and getting better and better will, again, restructure and reformat your relationship properly, effectively, and realistically, you can apply this to so many different things in the car, in the crate, door frames. You're creating low energy, focused, engaged behavior before you start your day. Okay. Another great way to make your relationship better with your dog and to start your day off properly is take something such as food. You get food out, your dog probably eats in the morning or in the evening or both. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of food and a little bit of treats here. And I'm simply just gonna put it in this bowl. And again, I'm going to create me as the gatekeeper, ultimately releasing the dog and making the decision for the dog whether or not they can do what they wanna do. So I only put a couple pieces in here just to demonstrate for you guys exactly how to do it. Be can sit, good sit. You put the food down, the dog goes. So again, we're right back to square one where he goes, that's mine. Same thing he did when we were outside with the door. I have to teach him that he has to go through me to get what he wants. Because again, it's just like kids. Kids are looking for structure, looking for permission to do certain things because A, they don't want to get in trouble, and B, they trust us as parents. So that's exactly what I'm doing here. So as soon as I feel like he sat for an adequate amount of time, I'm gonna build the proof up again and grab the bowl and put it down again. So he goes again, I correct him. And I'm going to continue to do this until he gets it right. What I'm looking for is for the bowl to go down, he looks at me for direction, I release him, and then we're off to the races. So one thing you can do to help really get the dog excited in realistic form, because when you pour your kibble or you put your food into the bowl, the dog's gonna get really excited. So I'm just gonna keep throwing these in here, getting him excited, sit. I put the food down, yes, and I break him. And that's exactly what we wanna do Full circle. He looks at me, he asks for permission, I release him. So just like we've done before, I'm gonna to continue to proof him over and over again until I feel very confident that he understands the big picture that we're trying to teach him. Looks at me, good, yes, good job. So what this does, guys, is it puts me in charge. It's not an alpha thing. It's not, I'm big, bad, and I'm in control. It's just, he's a dog with no thumbs, can't make up his own decisions, and if he does, they're probably not good because he's a puppy. Same thing with your older dog. You guys ultimately want to be the gatekeeper of really big decisions or decisions throughout the day to build your relationship more structured. Really small, easy exercises like this can make a huge difference in your dog's relationship with you. And again, when I'm talking about the big picture, I'm talking about, it's the same equivalence to school. 
when you go to school, the big picture is your education. The small little battles that we're doing here today, science, math, gym, whatever it may be, these are the small little battles that really paint the big picture. So that's what I'm doing here today. I'm working on thresholds. I'm telling them, hey buddy, this is what you can and can't do. And what it does is it puts me in charge and it's gonna start developing a response of, hey, can I or can I not? So what I'm gonna do is start doing what I call obedience combos. Very simple concept. I'm gonna take all this stuff that I work on individually and then put them together in a chain reaction type thing. It's just like dance. When you learn one thing and then you learn the other thing and you put it together, it becomes one big thing. And that's exactly what we're developing here. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spin them around, I'm gonna work on my thresholds on the gate and then I'm also gonna work on the food. You can sit, good sit. And again, I'm glad you guys saw that. He starts to get up. I give him a little body pressure. He puts his butt back down and then I release the pressure by stepping away. Sit. Good. I'm gonna put the food down. Good decision. He's engaged with me. I like that. Okay. So if you wanna take it even a step further, you can start building your thresholds, putting your food further, putting more food in there, putting your dog into more of a sit stay away from the gate and continue to just get better and better and better. So let's try this. You can sit, nice head. Food goes in. Good. Grab the food. I put it down a second time, which is even harder. I want engagement, that's my boy. Beautiful job, okay, yes! Good job, good job. That's like the number one thing I, su I can suggest to any dog owner, whether it's a puppy or an older dog, just start restructuring your relationship. Again, the micro of your dog reacting on the leash, barking at people, jumping, is a product of the bigger picture. It's bubbling up from a bigger picture. It's the fact that you can't even get your dog to simply sit down before you walk through the door or just in, in trade, the dog actually just barging through and making decisions. Your dog's not gonna respect you. It's not gonna look at you for advice. It's not gonna look at you for, hey, what should I do next? if you don't practice it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, don't forget, leave a comment below. Let me know what you guys thought of this video. Like, subscribe to my channel. We're gonna be uploading as much as we possibly can. Beacon, thank you, sir, for helping me out demonstrate the beautiful powers of thresholds and developing a better relationship with your dog. I'm Tom Davis, and I will talk to you next time. Peace.